guys, it's April and I have a book I want to talk to you about and a dog in my scarf. So this review was sparked off by the fact that East by Edith Padu has gotten a sequel. After 13 years of me thinking this was a standalone book, there is a sequel out. I didn't know this was happening. I got an email and all of a sudden I had to read this book again. And I will do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews with the non spoiler section up front followed by just a spoiled filled dump of everything that just is in my brain and I need to get out but I will tell you when that happens. Now East by Edith Padu is a East of the Sun, West of the Moon retelling that first got me into the whole East of the Sun, West of the Moon mythology. This is a book that started it all for me. It is the story of Rose who is the odd one out in her family. She's always wandering off, she's always getting in trouble, and then one day a white bear shows up and asks to take Rose away. Now it follows the whole East of the Sun, West of the Moon story arc where you've got the bear, you've got the quest, you've got everything going wrong and then things happening. I, I, I don't want to spoil the whole plot line, but what I like about East is how it is flushed out. It is told from this perspective of the white bear. It is told from the perspective of Rose. It is told from the perspective of the troll queen. It is told from the perspective of her father and of her brother. All of these perspectives are intertwined and told slightly different so you can get a feel for the characters. And at the same time, it gives you a fuller view of everything that is going on. Now, I truly enjoy what Edith Padu has done with this retelling. She has made the trolls in a way that I have never really seen before. And then she weaves Rose's journey in a way that isn't so odd, but is still magical but human driven at the same time. With East of the Sun, West of the Moon, there is a, a lot of weird things that go on in the original telling of the story, but in this telling, it is more character, it is more human based. She meets some interesting people along the way who help her on her journey and what she's trying to accomplish. And then the folklore, the northern folklore, both the Nordic and the Inuit, how it is woven into this story. I like it. I like it so much. The way Edith Padu has woven all of these mythos into this one retelling. I really, really, truly enjoy it. I love seeing the journey that Rose goes on. There are parts in the story that I really wish were more flushed out and I feel a little disconnect with the characters, but overall this is one of the best East of the Sun, West of the Moon retellings and I love it for it. If you like retellings, if you like East of the Sun, West of the Moon, and you haven't picked this one up yet, I highly recommend that you do. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this if you have because this is one that I grew up with. Now this is the point in which if you haven't read the book, I highly recommend that you go and read the book and come back and we can start a conversation because I have so many words on the story because like I said, it is one of those stories that just made me into this avid lover of retellings and of the East of the Sun, West of the Moon story in general. But if you have read it, stick around, I got words. The first thing that I have to mention in all of this is the trolls, the troll queen and all of the structure that Edith Padu builds up around the trolls in general. I find it oddly unique in the way that she made the trolls beautiful. When you think troll, you don't think beauty, but then you have this underlying skin condition, I guess you can call it, and the gravelly voice that folds it out. I don't know what it is about the way she did the troll that really, really captures me. It's almost like she mixed trolls and fays all into this mystical thing. And then the hints at the Nordic and the Inuit mythologies and how she weaves everything together and the storytelling she brings into the story. I mean, you've got all of Freya and Thor and all of that belief system kind of sort of integrated in the lives of Rose's family. I am fairly interested in the whole birth direction theory. This is the first place I've ever heard of it. I don't know if it's an actual thing. I'll probably have to go and do research over all of that later. But the way that Rose is almost the center of this family family at this point just because of her nature and how she 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 is the cornerstone sometimes of how everyone interacts but at the same time she is north i find that how that is built out she's a center but she's true north a lot of journeying and a lot of travel is always about knowing where north is and north being your guide and north being your center focus i mean that is compass that is how a compass works is you find your north right 
So just the fact that she's North and she is Rose, I really like how that is tied in. And maybe I'm reading more into that than actually exists, but I like how that is. I have never liked Rose's mother. With everything she puts on superstition and how she built up Rose to be a replacement, it irks me. And then and then how, how willing she was to just Rose go and save her sister. I mean, I can understand that, but picking one child over the other, ah! And so I've always never felt any empathy for Rose's mother, even when she seemingly has a change of conscience when she realizes that the whole giving of the candle and everything else probably wasn't the best idea. I don't know. There's something about Rose's mom that I couldn't connect with. And I would have loved to see some of Rose's siblings built out a little more. They're just names except for Nettie. And I can understand that this is already a 500 page book. And if you built out the characters anymore, you're pulling away from the story. But they felt a little flat to me and I wanted more from them. And I guess it's because you get the father's perspective and Nettie's perspective. And that's why those characters feel the most flushed. This story, there's so much that could have been in this story. I think in this day and age, I can very much see this book being a trilogy. Really build, I mean, even a quartet and breaking up all of the different sections because they're named after the cardinal directions. Building those out, all out into their own books and really flushing it out. But, you know, it already exists and I really like it. That's just a random thought that went through my head. And of course, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think and who else is excited about the next book in this series because oh my gosh I need it in my hands right now. I need it. I need it. It's probably going to be the next review you see on this channel is that book because that is my life. Heart your beautiful faces. Bye.